So today we're going to be starting a new series that is going to be a variety of videos on soundproofing. There's a lot of really good videos out online. Um, I see some of them where I give them thumbs up and I also see some where I'm like, really? Uh, so we're going to talk about a bunch of different things. But the first thing I want to talk about is a metric that people use for soundproofing, which is the STC standard. The STC standard, sound transmission coefficient, and what it is and what it isn't. So first of all, let's just talk about how they measure something. So if you get an STC number for a construction, whether it's a wall or a door or whatever, they build it in a lab. Scientists build it. And you're hardly ever going to have scientists build your building. So it's going to be built a lot better than you're going to get what you do, unless you do it yourself. So you build this thing. It's embedded in a concrete envelope so that they don't get any transmission through other things. It's perfectly airtight. It's perfectly built and they do everything, the exact spacing of the screws, the exact amount of adhesives and glues and things they use. And they test this sample and then they come up with a number. So you pick something off the internet that say, let's see, STC 52 to meet a building code for an apartment that's STC 50. And you make the assumption that that's gonna work and everything's gonna be good. Well, most building codes have some caveats in them where they say, design STC of 50 or field tested at 45 because they know it's never going to test the same in the field. The reality is five to eight points is the variance you typically get in the field. So your 50 could easily be a 42. So the question is, is a 42 really adequate for apartment to apartment isolation? Or is it adequate for your application, whatever it might be, office at home, um, home studio, you know, any number of uses that you might think you're going to use that number for. So first thing you got to look at is the way they test it is a way, it's like everything in, in terms of standards. Standards are developed to have a standard. They're not really developed to deal with the real world. So when you build your wall in the field, you're not necessarily going to know that in their test, the drywall screws were torqued to a specific torque rating, were exactly six inches apart, that they did uh, specific kinds of caulk, all the things that they do when they build a wall. So you're not necessarily going to build yours exactly like theirs. Yours is going to have electrical outlets in it, possible ductwork penetrations where you're sharing ductwork between spaces, piping penetrations, and other things that are going to degrade the performance. So you really need to understand what happens when you have those kinds of situations. Now there's ways of calculating what's known as the, it's the composite rating of a structure. So if you had an STC 50 wall that was built quote perfectly, then you have an electrical outlet in it. And then you have, uh, I don't know, a piece of piping coming through it. That's got a little bit of a gap around it or a piece of ductwork that's got a half inch gap around it. And that's above a ceiling you have ways of calculating how much loss of performance you're going to have by the percentage of area that is occupied by these other rated assemblies, whether it's an air hole or an electrical outlet or whatever it may be. So you can, you can calculate what you're going to get in the field, but the real trick is knowing what's going to be acceptable. So we need to talk about the deficiencies in an STC rating. In STC, there's a curve they give that they use as the standard, which rolls off and ends at 125 hertz on the bottom end, and then it slopes up and slopes at a different slope, and then it levels out at higher frequencies. And so anything that meets that curve, that goes up and over, and that matches that will have the STC of whatever level that's been set at. You're also allowed to have things that occur below and above the curve that are out of spec. And there's a way to calculate allowable, and I'm not going to get into the math, but there's allowable variants that are included. So you can have a couple of different walls that test identically that look a lot different in terms of their frequency response. So the real trick is, what am I trying to isolate? Am I trying to isolate mechanical noise, which is broadband, even kind of almost like a pink noise? Am I trying to isolate impulse noise, like, I don't know, Let's say we've got uh, a bunch of cobblers next door and they're banging away on little hammers and that 
brings me to thinking about something else. But we'll get back to that. So let's get cobblers next door. So it's a whole bunch of high frequency clacking noises. Or have I got a guy next door who's watching his home theater and he's watching, I can't, probably can't even use names of movies on YouTube. They'll probably get upset. Something with a lot of low frequency content in an action movie where there's a bunch of booming going on, which is below the STC standard. So the question becomes, what am I trying to fix? And the secondary question is, how much background noise is present in the room I'm in? Now, this room is extremely quiet. And right now, I don't know if I can reach this thing. This is a little residential grade pink noise machine that also does fan noise. So you'll notice the difference between different types of noise that might be present and how those affect everything else going on. Now those are relatively loud. And then we've got the white and pink noise variants. So when you start looking at having that level of background noise in a room, the amount of soundproofing you might need to keep an outside sound out is greatly reduced. There's got to be an off button, right? There we go. So the way you have to look at design and the way we look at design in our firm is we look at the application. And if someone's got an unlimited budget, we over design because we never know whether all of these conditions are gonna be met. We were just testing a venue the other day that has all kinds of mechanical noise in apartments that are above a hookah lounge, which is gonna be playing music with a lot of bass content. Now, if that mechanical noise ever is shut off, the amount of bass getting through will become far more offensive. So when we're looking at it, we're designing with a 16 dB safety valve in the way we're going to approach that particular project. But anyway, I want to get into too many specifics. So we'll get off of that topic and we'll get into looking at some specific products. Warning, warning, warning. Seth is about to give a brutally honest rant. This is your final chance to save your children's brains from exploding, caused by all the mad knowledge and horrendous truths untold till now. So my first rant is about mass loaded vinyl. MLV uh, recently has gotten a lot of attention because there's a company that will remain unnamed that has just made this huge advertising push acting like they invented it. And mass loaded vinyl has been around for many, 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 many years. It is made by all kinds of different people. There's different versions of it. There's calcium carbonate, barium phosphate. There's all sorts of different ways this is made, but basically it's a sheet of vinyl it's loaded with some other materials to make it more dense, and it's being touted as the fix for all acoustic problems. So recently I had a construction manager, because they, they know way more about sound than us consultants. They suggested replacing a concrete system with vibration isolators designed to keep a radio station from getting truck noise outdoors. They wanted to replace that with mass loaded vinyl because it's going to fix everything. I saw the video, this video where they got this little thing making kind of a little jackhammer noise. And then they take a round piece of this mass loaded vinyl and they slip it down over the outside. And magically, there's so much sound deadened. Well, there is. And the issue there is there's many other materials that would do the same thing. 